are live. We are live on Facebook. Again, always surprises me. And I'm delighted that poor Sonia, I cut her off guard. And she said, just one second, and too late. <laughs> Over here. So welcome, welcome everybody to For Freak's Sake Marketing Adventures with Carmel, where we give you tips, tricks, all about how to market your business, but also bring you some amazing people just like this amazing queen. By the way, the search queen and the communication queen, we have done a live before, but let me introduce you to Sonia so that I could <clears throat> get, pay her justice so that we will know. Now, Sonia, I have one problem though. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce your last name. Patsuzzi so, Raymond. Patsuzzi <laughs> Raymond. Okay. It's the Patsuzzi. All right. Patsuzzi. <laughs> so this is Sonia Patsuzzi Raymond, also known as, as you can see on her um, name there, as the search queen. Google search expert and recently become a Google partner, but we'll tell you more about that. Sonia is the founder of the Marketing Republic, which is her actual physical business, as in office business, an agency nationwide focused on getting clients, businesses found on Google by their ideal clients for the problems that they solve. Such a valuable tool. So she has successfully generated, and I'm literally going to fall over this event, 95 million. Let me say that again, 95 million in sales for clients since her business started less than three years ago. So pretty friggin' outstanding stuff. Sonia has honors degree in master and master's in marketing. And she's been in global marketing advertising industry for 16 years, although you don't look old enough to be that. <laughs> and she has worked for some hand. amazing brands like Guinness, Jemison, I mean, we are Irish, come on, Nestle, L'Oreal, and Special K, and that's only naming a few. But recently, or secretly, she's been given the name of the marketer with a huge heart. Now, if you're watching us on Facebook, guys, put in your comments and everything. If you can't answer them live, we will get back to you. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe so that you can get even more of these tips and interviews with these amazing people. So, Sonia, tell us a little bit about you and how you became to be this friggin' amazing marketing queen. Oh, bless you. Thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. You are far too kind. You know, I love you, Carmel. <laughs> bless you. I feel like you're like my aunt or something. That's how I like, because obviously being in um, over in Australia and being Irish, it's like all of us kind of flock together. Yes, like, we do. Indeed, yeah. So I love what you do. And thank you for having me. Um, my so pleasure. Yeah, I'm Sonia Patotsky raymond and I am the director of the Marketing Republic. And my business has been running just under three years now, and it is 100% the most proudest achievement that I have to date. I have um, a team of 15 people, and we specialize in Google Ads, SEO, um, and predominantly restoring people's faith when it comes to Google search. So I absolutely adore what I do, and I know it sounds cliche, cliche but I literally wake up every morning and feel so grateful for the business that I have created and the team that I have and the culture that I've created. And yeah, I, I feel like I'm living my best life. So it's great. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about obviously from Ireland, as you say. So um, how long have you been in Australia now? Uh, nearly eight years. So yeah, nearly I'm a citizen as well. So yeah, I've been okay. nearly eight years now. Yeah. How about you, Carmen? Okay. Awesome. I've been here 30, 30 something years, but that's okay. I've lived in Australia longer than I've lived in Ireland and I still talk like this. Um, so, and, so what, what made Sonia decide that enough's enough, I want to change, I want to go to Australia. So because what the audience quite often like to know is because we have this illusion, there's Sonia, she has this friggin' amazing business and, you know, she's so successful. And if you ever see any of the photos of Sonia, she's always glammed up and looking amazing. <laughs> but, you know, what made you decide? So sometimes there's not so great times and, and we decide to have this big move. So what was that for you? For me, um, in Ireland, um, I absolutely love where I come from. But predominantly, our work ethic is, is incredibly strong. And when I studied my degree and master's in marketing, I, I really wanted to make sure I could have my hotshot job eventually at the, the end of the tunnel after five years of education. 
So I think for me, what it was um, and why I moved to Australia, first it was because my sister was over here and I knew I was going to live in Australia since the age I was 16. So since the age of 16. And that was because it was just this massive pull that I had um, at one point. And I think it was when a lot of the Irish started moving to Australia in my yeah. generation. And I'm like, what's the, what's the goal with Australia? <laughs> Like, oh, it must be amazing. And it sounded like the promised land anyway, coming from Ireland. So I was like, okay, yeah, so I'm definitely going to go, but it needed to be the right time. And yeah. for me, it just wasn't quite the right time. But when my sister fell pregnant with my niece, I was like, okay, I need to be there for the birth of my niece. I want to, I don't want to miss out on being an auntie. And yeah, I arrived two weeks before she was born. And I literally, it was the best decision I've ever made, like, honestly. Wow. Um, but I have to admit, coming to Australia from Ireland, very little people would give you a shot, like, as in, oh, yeah, you're on a holiday working visa, she'll be out again in six months, we're not going to hire her. So I literally walked the streets of Perth, and I'm like, give me a shot, I have a degree, I have a master's in marketing, I've worked in all these brands across the world, like, on global brands. And literally, I met a very clear, like, I want sponsorship, I want sponsorship, I want sponsorship. So um, I got my sponsorship and I got my permanent residency. And yeah, I feel very, very grateful for the opportunities that have been presented to me. So yeah, you know, awesome. Definitely to do with my career as well, like, and, and that yeah. was as well as personal. So it was definitely yeah. the right choice. Yeah, I feel very, yeah. very grateful to live here. Like, I really genuinely feel like people are living in Australia, I think, as well, may take it for granted. but Australia versus like the quality of life back in Ireland there's just no comparison and yeah. it allowed me so many opportunities so it's definitely different and I think as as an expat when you come out here it's not that you don't I'm like you I love my hometown I love Ireland mm. but nobody knows you here so it's an opportunity to right. completely reinvent yourself from scratch oh, so good yeah, nobody, and knows. No, nobody has any <laughs> preconceived ideas of who you are or who yeah. you're not. Or small town men mentality. It's like, oh, yeah, I know her. She's so and so's daughter. Yeah, so uh, yeah. Going to you. Yeah, do you know what I mean? They're all the, the normal town yeah. talk that you'd get. Yeah. I know. And my poor father had five daughters. So, you know, every time <laughs> we turned around, somebody knew something. But yeah, it, it was a great opportunity to, because as I said, I came here 30 something years ago, to reinvent myself, although I didn't know who myself was at that mm. time. I just knew there was there was something different. And like you, I didn't know I was going to go to Australia, but I knew from a small child I would never stay in my hometown. Mm. I just knew, just mm. there. So tell us, um, so as you say, you're so grateful to be here and, you know, we'll go a bit deeper into some of your great achievements and your good news of late. But what success to you? Like, what, what does Sonia wake up and decide that this is success? How do you measure that? Honestly, how I measure it is like having a team around me that literally care just as much as me about the business and like they treat me like family and I treat them like family I mean like freedom to be able like because the business is at, is at a really is at a stage now where I'm not needed in every single hat that is required yes. to run a business I yeah. have people that I can afford now to delegate that stuff <laughs> to I don't have to be the bookkeeper I don't have to be the like the accountant or the yeah. creature or all of those uh, lovely jobs um which a lot of people don't speak about. Um, so success to me is actually being able to afford to do everything that is needed to make the business run so I can actually sleep at night. So, yeah. <laughs> because yeah. there has been sleepless nights going to business, like, and, you know, we're constantly solving problems. And, you know, you say, oh, yeah, I'm going to set up my own business, set up my own show, I'll be my own boss. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds then, great. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. Live my best life. And then, you get hit with problems that yeah. nobody told you about and nobody like and, and there's nobody to ask and you have to figure out the answers yeah. and you have to google it and figure everything out yourself and one of my favorite quotes is by one of the people I inspire most in business and that's Marie Forleo everything is figure outable yes so <laughs> if I go with that motto I'll find the solution but if I go with all the problems I won't find the solution so yeah. everything for every problem there is a solution and that yeah. is um definitely the success for me of that business has been having that mentality and that mindset that has driven me through when, at times when it was very difficult to your challenge with your own like belief in yourself and yeah can I really do this imposter syndrome 
am I really good as what I think I am? You know, all that jazz. Yeah, you know, yeah. Feelings of f- f- fear, feelings of um, fear of judgment or fear of failure. And what if I fail? But the thing is, what I don't think we understand enough of is there are laws of the universe. And for every action, there's an opposite. There's an equal opposite reaction. So you can't yeah. fail if you take the action. Like yeah. this is what we don't talk about. Like you can yes. fail if you take the action. And yeah. honestly, if you don't take the action, then you you will fail. And as simple as that. Yeah. Well, it, because you you just don't take it. I quite often um used to teach some of my members that it's about taking the action. You get a result. Now you can call that result failure, or you can say, is it effective or ineffective towards the outcome I want? If it's ineffective, okay, what do I need to change? Do I need to learn more? There is no failure. You're right. When you take the action, you just find a new way not to do it that way. <laughs> and it's not a failure. It's a learning. It's a yeah. Learning. I know now how not to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I love uh, Marie Folio as well. It is figure outable. But if you are stuck in the frame of mind of, oh, my God, I can't do that. I can't do that. You yeah. just can't do it. You're right. If you can or you can't, you're right. You're right. Whatever your reality <laughs> is, you're right. If you feel like you're a failure, you are a failure. If you feel like you're a superstar, you are a superstar. You Absolutely. Are a superstar. Back to your belief, you know. So. so so we're going to get a little bit more into you. But I also want to make sure into you that sounds a bit rude. Um, but I also want to make sure <clears throat> and I'm really curious from my own perspective is the importance of SEO, even for a small business. So, you know, I'm a small business in the scheme of things for sure. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I have a comprehension of SEO and the importance of it. But I know that you now are helping smaller businesses as well as the bigger businesses that you work with. And you're doing it more in a, a kind of a, a group um, arena, if you like. And you're teaching people the importance of being found via SEO on Google websites, I can't even do it justice. So could you give us a bit of an overview of that and some tips maybe as to how people can start doing it? Yeah, 100%. Um, So when it comes to smaller business owners, I have a huge passion to help them, more so because the smaller business owners are the ones that end up, um, how do I say it in a nice, diplomatic way? (laughs) Um, they're the ones that usually get ripped off and they're the ones that get taken advantage of when yeah. um, they don't have the, the expertise or the like, level of knowledge that is required to make an empowered decision around their marketing, especially digital. So I created a, pro- a program specifically to educate smaller business owners so that they don't fall into the traps that most smaller business owners fall into. And the reason why I know that is the case is because I've worked with hundreds of smaller business owners that have been in that position that yeah. had not known what to look out for, or had not known where to go next and when to yes. put all their eggs in one basket. Here, shut up and take my money kind of an attitude. Don't know, don't need to know anything else. And then their expectations have not been met. So yeah. for me, um, SEO is the backbone of what your business is in terms of your digital presence online. Um, it's kind of like your website is your shop front. Um, and literally, if you if you opened up a new shop, most people wouldn't know about that shop. You need to promote yeah. that shop. So yeah. your website is that is your shop front online, but nobody's going to know about your website unless you promote the website. You know what I mean? Yeah. So promoting yes. it is through a means of SEO. So when it comes to SEO, uh, I a lot of clients of mine and people, anyone that has a website make sure you avoid those people that say I can help you rank on Google I can help you this because everyone gets hit with that spam and it's not correct and it's a robot sending out loads of emails like to everyone that is indexable on on the internet and on Google and what happens in that instance is people fall into those traps and they end up being wound up with a company overseas and their website ends up being penalized so being penalized means not doing best practice SEO okay so when I talk about best practice SEO, best practice SEO encompasses both on-page, off-page and technical SEO. So if people say, oh, I've done a blog content. I do my SEO myself. That's not SEO. If people say, oh, yeah, I got a link there um, from another page, like from another website, that's not SEO. SEO is, is literally a whole host of deliverables from an on-page perspective. Like content is part of on-page, but making sure that all your meta descriptions are up to date all your meta titles all your metadata 
in terms of some of the pages that are on your website may most likely will be missing a lot of that metadata making sure that when you mention one of your services within your website that you can actually hyperlink that onto another page on your website where they can read all about that so yeah. called internal linking um in, uh, like uploading regular blogs but making sure that they have metadata making sure your website your homepage of your website mentions all your services so that because when google indexes your site it, your website homepage is the most powerful page of your entire website as well as the seo campaign other quick wins that you could look at because obviously there's a whole extensive um yeah. way, but on page as well um, and user journey experience falls into that so and having enough conversion points so i bang on about this if anyone follows me about um, having enough conversion points on your website. So I see every single time I take on a new client, you will be surprised about them not having conversion points. Conversion points is having a phone call, an email inquiry form in the top right-hand corner and a sticky booking form on every page so that if anybody is coming on your site that they don't have to go contact us to find you. Yes. If you have your phone number in the top right-hand corner and your email inquiry form, what actually happens is you make it easy for the end user to reach you. Yes. So if you make it hard and you make it like a lot less, a lot more time consuming, chances are your traffic is going to bounce off. So they're not going to, you might get loads of traffic, but they're not converting because you haven't made it easy for them. Yeah. And yeah. another problem I see is like on desktop, people make all these lovely, sexy designs for de for desktop. And then they were like, have you seen what your website looks like on a mobile? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, it is honestly like such a problem because it's like, there's like, text over people's faces there's no com the conversion points that they may have had on desktop aren't even on mobile and the majority of traffic in this day and age unless you're very much b2b is mobile but again optimizing for mobile should always be the preferred way of thought given that content consumption's doubled since last year so yeah. we just that is definitely things that need people need to consider because and then obviously setting up google analytics so you can actually track all that data coming through off-page SEO um, can be all your links that are driving traffic to your site. So you can actually, um, you can do articles on Medium that drive your traffic back to your site. You can do like Google My Business optimization, listing citations. Yeah. What else can you do? You can actually purchase um, some off-page links as well and, and an automated process as well. Mm -hmm. And then for technical SEO, this is something that a lot of people miss. So technical SEO is making sure that your website code is optimized for Google. So again, you'd be surprised by every single client I take on technical has failed. So technical yes. SEO is like a third of doing SEO the right way. Do you know what I mean? So mm. that third is only, and, and two of those thirds of say on page and say off page of what traditionally people do. Um, what happens is you're missing a whole category of doing seo the right way by what google wants you to do so mm. it's a huge um it has been a huge uh i wouldn't say issue but like it's something that we've had to turn around for every new client we've taken on board even they've done seo before and um, some clients that i've inherited have been penalized because it was outsourced to a company overseas and they just spammed loads of backlinks like loads and loads yeah. of negative backlinks but again i need to, I, when it comes to having loads of negative backlinks what happens in that instance is that it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to benefit from them. The negative links, it's kind of like, do you know how they- What's a negative backlink? Just a negative backlink them. would be like a spammy backlink. And they're just adding loads of links to try and trick the search engine. Google is right. Google is a lot smarter than most people realize. So you can't trick the search engine, like pretty much. Yeah. If you try to trick the search engine, you'll end up flat on your face and you will not be found at all on Google. You'll be penalized and you'll be literally disavowed. The website yeah. will be appearing. Um, but I've seen this as a huge problem. So again, um, those negative backlinks to, tr to, to give you guys an understanding is that when we're talking about backlinks, we're talking about, if you know that analogy, you are the sum of the five most people you spend time with. Yes. Yeah. So again, if you, all of those friends that you have are really kind of not uh, in the best interest of you, you'll end up not in the best position. Yes. So again, if you have all a whole host of negative backlinks that are not doing you any favors the chat the thing is you're actually inheriting the negativity of those links onto your website and yeah google. does that make sense yeah like is, it, is, it, is it yeah it's influencing you yeah. by how it's like you're hanging out with the bad crowd so you're going to get a bad name whether you're 100 whether you did anything yeah. wrong or not <laughs> yeah. what about does it add to so we're seeing a lot about video for example mm. so does it add 
to the SEO um, reading or Google reading to have a video on your um, homepage, for example, or other pages? Yes, once it's not going to reduce the speed on your site. So right. if the speed, if it, if it makes your site a lot slower to load, you, it's really not good because one of the main algorithms that were, were released on Google in May was page experience updates. So part of that is page speed, user journey experience, HTML coding, all of the necessary things that Google needs in order to pass that algorithm pretty much. Um, and if your website video is very clunky and it actually makes it a bit slower, then definitely need to get that checked out. But you, there are ways of compressing them. So I was going to say, and making sure you them. don't don't store it onto YouTube in order to do it on your website because there's a time and a place to do some of that, absolutely. So, you know, this will be up on YouTube. But um, for a website, I would imagine not storing it on YouTube because that would actually pause it a little bit too. Yeah, wouldn't it? not necessarily. I'd have to come back to you about that. But again, yeah. like, again video is, is the way people are getting to get, like, I suppose... When it comes to video, people are learning more and more about who you are through video, and they yeah. can actually make a connection with you, given that they have never met you. And the way the world is at the moment, we're all yeah. uh, socializing digitally, and we're networking digitally. You know, and yes, it's great, but again, at the same time, people need to be aware of like content is one thing, and pushing out like posts and all that, which is great, but the the news feed is really um, flooded. So again video your and that's your forte video is 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 a really good tool to use well i i actually got an email um i just put up a post about it that a video i had put up on my youtube channel it was to script or not to script it was just a three minute video where somebody uh, another company has asked me if they could please share my video on their instagram and linkedin page because it's really relevant to their audience and i go huh? Um, and I, I, I do not know anything about SEO. I'm not even pretending, but I do know how to get the videos ranked in YouTube using yes. keywords. Yes, and that can ultimately as well, when you put your website within YouTube, you'll drive traffic automatically into your website yeah. as well. Yeah, so, yeah. It's, it's, it's fascinating. So it's the stuff I never knew before I got into business. It's like, I'm what? I'm very heck? proud of you. Like, in all fairness, so proud of you. Like, honestly, the gray-haired gray granny. <laughs> That's my auntie you're talking about. <laughs> so what do you think, or what would you attribute <clears throat> to the biggest factor that has helped you be successful? Like what, what is that, you know, is it a parent? Is it your own drive? Is it, what is it? Honestly, like it is consistency, but it's a bit deeper than that. So for me growing up, <clears throat> um, my mom and dad split up when I was really young. So my, so my mom raised me and my two sisters um, on her own and worked serious amount of jobs to keep our roof over our head in a very good area um and I saw her struggle you know and mm. I didn't really get to see a whole lot of my parents growing up and for me the reason why I am successful today is like my whole driving force is I want to set up my business to be the best that I can be so that my kids don't have to struggle that won't see me struggle to keep yeah. the roof over their head and that they I can give them the best life. Not saying that I didn't have a great life with mom and dad. It's, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that my enough, enough, enough is enough moment, as they call it, was like being a child and knowing that I would have loved to have had my mom and dad around me a bit more as a child and guide me a bit more, but they were so busy working and mom and dad weren't together. Mm. And I think every child, you know, deserves like having their parents show them. And, and again, even though mom has done a great job, it's like, every child should want should should have their parents around as much as they possibly can in those crucial yeah. years of their lives and i think there are no accidents and my mom is an incredible person like incredible woman and she's like i think that is where i've got a lot of my drive from as well with my mom because i saw her bring up three girls on her own and yeah. worked so many jobs and like was never taking no for an answer so i've got my drive there but I think as well, I also brought that passion into my business because the business owners that I deal with, I want to take the stress out of it to, so that they don't have to work to, so hard to make ends meet. I want to make sure that they can work smarter, not harder, so that they can spend more time with, with their loved ones. And with their theirs. Yeah. yeah. So and I love that when you say there's no accidents because you're so right because 
that driver. And look, at the end of the day, and I totally get it, but as kids, it's no negativity to parents, to yeah. anyone else or anything. It's what, as a child, we made it mean in that moment. I was yeah. the youngest of five girls. We had, we lived in a two bedroom house, you know, yourself in Ireland, a little um, terraced house. And we had, we never wanted for anything or anything like that. Yeah. But for me, I never knew where I fitted in because the other four sisters had always bloody done everything. So I was the last one coming in and go, where I can't jump the step like that. Can I can't do that? So I I became a big shit stirrer, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> um, yeah, it's interesting but, that I was also a middle child. So yeah. I also struggled to figure out where I fitted in and a, yeah. a middle child of two, like one baby and one older. I yeah. found that incredibly challenging to fit in as well. Yeah. So, and it's interesting because I have three children, so I have a middle child and it's it's quite interesting. And I was a single mom for many, many years mm -hmm. and I actually worked in an Irish bar and I was afraid of my life to arc up too much or anything because then I wouldn't have the money to pay for the roof of my kid's head. And mm -hmm. I now can look back in what you're saying. It's quite um, funny because I didn't spend the time with my kids that I wanted to because I had to work 60 hours a week. Mm. Um, but then that was a, a pusher from my old um, mm. stuff. But anyway, mm. so what I, throughout business and everything, we always make some challenging decisions. Mm -hmm. And what's what's one of the hardest decisions you've ever had to make in business? For me, um, was firing a client, um, mm. and that is not something I take lightly. I think for me, where the type of person I am, like I have no time for nonsense um and i'm a straight shooter say it like it is if i don't feel like smiling i won't smile if i don't like you i don't like you that's just yeah. it is. everybody <laughs> likes coca cola and i don't care like that's kind of how i am you know yeah and i've learned to own that and it's we're all we don't need to fit in with the crowd it's totally um cool but i think for me like in order for um my clients to make sure i could get the best results for them is making sure that we align on values. So obviously, when you're starting out in business, it's there are you are faced with those decisions on whether to take on clients or some clients or not. And there was this one particular client that I was like, I'm not sure if they're going to be a right fit for me because like they're not they're, they're mirroring three of the values, but not all of them. So trust, respect, loyalty, integrity is is my values, and everyone that works for me mirrors those values. All of my clients mirror those values, and they see us as a, as a team. Um, unit rather than working against us otherwise it just creates more work for us inefficiency then our retainers mean like how we our business model ends up costing us more than what it's worth yeah so it's so important that those values are the right fit for us you know so for me it was like literally not like I, I was already like covering all my overheads and I was like you know what long term this is not why I started my business I didn't start my business to work with somebody that is being disrespectful so like I have to make that decision to like I think you're great I wish you all the success but you're not for me and then as soon as you say those things it's kind of like oh no 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 but I want to work with you I'm like no unfortunately like my morals are too high I respect myself too enough to to know what I deserve and what I don't deserve it's like breaking up with <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah. so it's not you it's me it's not you it's me. like my status yeah. is too high you can't give me what I need kind of a thing but that was honestly, it was very hard because like, obviously you're, you're challenged with, oh, but if firing is fine, but my reputation is everything to me and I don't want to yeah. be working with nasty clients that ring you all hours of the night and don't respect your boundaries. And just because they pay you money, I think you're going to take like remarks and nasty stuff from them. That's just not how I roll. I yeah. respect them no, enough to know the, my ideal client is who I want to work with. I don't want to work with everyone. You know, I don't yeah. have no interest in serving the masses i just want to have that niche that i see gel with and we're all on the same page and let's go that's yeah what it's and then it becomes so much easier as you say when when you can understand your values and it was one of the biggest things that i um did was to actually work out what they were to put a name on them mm -hmm. um and and yeah and if i'm totally honest i was always about being authentic that was a big mm -hmm. thing for me but I wasn't actually being authentic because, as you would know, through um, maybe it's the Irish culture or whatever, sometimes we put a face on it and pretend everything was OK. And I worked out, it was around the time actually my sister was ill and then passed away, that 
that cracked me open enough to allow the real authentic self to come out and go, mm. I don't care what you think about me anymore. Mm. But this is who I am and like that, that's straight talk. And so to be able to put a label on the values and to sit in that certainty of knowing what they are is actually huge. So well done that you could do that. Thank you. Well, I, I honestly am a firm believer, like the more the more you are, you know who you are and the more yeah. individual you are and own that and know that we're not meant to be like everybody else. Yeah. The more that you will attract what your life, what your heart desire, the more clear you are and yeah. the more your own bestie, your own best friend, the less likely you are to be influenced by your outside world. Yeah. Like that is what's been a game changer for me. Like there has been so many times of uncertainty for me and I'm like, oh should I really do this I don't know <laughs> but then it's kind of like each time you do like a Facebook live or you'd like oh boom I got a new client and then you start seeing momentum and then all of a sudden you start seeing all these people they haven't seen in years come out of the woodwork supporting yes. you you're like oh wow yeah <laughs> you know, like you know it's it's kind of like it's like that moment of like it's it's really like heartwarming to know that you've already you've just surpassed your ego's beliefs yeah you know yeah. like tricked your brain and like yeah thank you ego you're trying to protect me but i'm not gonna die here i'm fine i just need to do it feel the fear and yeah <laughs> yeah and i always think of it there's a difference between the aware ego and just your ego and our ego's job the only job it has is to like, take care of us mm-hmm. but when you're aware like you're saying and go yeah thank you i'm gonna give it a go anyway and yeah. it sounds weird because I do that. I talk to myself all the time. Go, what's this self? That's my controller coming out. Hang on a minute. <laughs> We're just going to let that one go. And in these uncertain times, that has been the biggest challenge of all. Yes. So, <clears throat> That's nice what, well. I know. Yeah, I know. Because we don't want to. And, owner, it's like perfectionism. This thing yes. Perfect, but like perfect is not, is literally not even real. It's done is better than perfect. That's Not my really mantra all the time. <laughs> Done is better than perfect. I get my <clears throat> members of our group all the time coming back to me. That's right, Carmen. Done is better than perfect, isn't it? Yes. Because <laughs> then we can give the feedback. Then we can find out. Like we have people making videos and things like that. And they're scared to make them. And we're going, I don't care what it looks like. Make it. Now we can tweak it. Now we can change the images. Now we can do a little bit. But if you don't make it, I can't. It's like you're putting a gag over my mouth. You can't do it. Yeah. So Tell us what are some of your success habits? So like in order to be in business for any length of time and to maintain it and more than that, be successful, there has to be some kind of a routine or structure that you have put in place to nurture you. What is that? Oh, you know what it is? Like, I just feel like I dream a lot, like, and I have goals that I set. So like when I say dream, I'm like, imagine it imagine like this is like the, the 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 conversation that happens over dinner with my husband most nights like imagine this imagine this and he's just like yeah and then you can do this and that so anyway my point is like dreaming bigger than where you are already like setting the yeah. benchmark to where you are now versus where you can go because i think when we're looking at you know what success means like and what success habits and all those sorts of things there has to be a certain fuel in the machine in order to get you where you want to go yeah so you have to recheck okay what am i doing here that is stopping me from getting from a to b and whatever is stopping you you need to identify that and remove that out of your life otherwise you'll be forever stuck so i think it's more to do with okay in order for me to get from point a to point b there is something that the very very successful people in the world are doing that i'm not aware of so find those people model what they do and all of a sudden yeah. you're like Marie Forleo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right. So, and, oh, and on a personal, mm. on a personal side of it, like, do you have that you, for me, for example, I get up at mostly 6 a.m. I'm at work by 6.30 mm. then I come back and I do a bit of meditation, which was very hard for me at first. And I know, right, because that will set up my day. I feel yeah. grounded. So do you have some kind of yes, I do, habit yeah. like that? So um, I used to be an early morning person until I owned a business. <laughs> and what happens is I'm like a night owl. My brain goes tick, 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 tick. And I'm literally, when I'm asleep, I'm doing a whole day's work on my mind. Yeah. Like I'm responding to comments at night time because I'm like, I'm addicted to like, oh, I need to make sure that they know that their value, yeah. their comments are valued and stuff like that. So 
for me at nighttime um i then like read every night i read my set books every night before i go to sleep i do my angel cards like i'm big into my angel and my inner divinity and i um, meditation every night i use the calm app every night i love my cold swaps i'm very much a hippie at heart like i'm totally a beach babe like if i could literally work in my jammies and wear and have no makeup that would be me ideal like i just love active wear on the weekend if you yeah. ever meet me and i'm not dressed up at all um but again to me um also mind I, I listen to a lot of mindset videos so if i'm in a funk i'm like okay if I don't change this, I'm going to have a shocking day. Or if I have, if I wake up at the wrong side of bed, I'm like, okay, I need to center myself now. Like, what is going on for me right now? Like, and yeah. I literally need to identify that and change it. But I do a lot of yoga as well and uh, meditation. I go to the gym, um. But I think it's all about taking care. Like, eat really nutritious food. Like, I don't yeah. smoke. Um, I haven't really drank since February. <laughs> I just it actually makes me it actually affects my sleep more and it doesn't make me be the best that I can be. So I'm not a huge yeah. drinker at all anymore either. And I feel like it gives me a lot more energy and yeah. surrounding myself with like-minded people is a huge one. Definitely. If you don't have, you don't have the people around you like saying, Oh, you know, keeping you accountable. Like I have, I have four coaches that I work with as well. This have literally allowed me to get to where I am now. Um, yeah. And that's really important, you know, having somebody to hold you accountable to what your goals are. Yeah. yeah absolutely so we're coming close to the end but i've a couple oh, more no. questions i know we could talk oh, about <laughs> so what is um the best advice you could give somebody that has never started with seo for example mm -hmm. what's the best like just if if, if they're gone uh, i hear what you're saying but where the bloody hell do i start what would be the number one thing that you would say this is what you need to look at I normally don't do this, but I think everyone's situation is very unique yeah. where they're at. And I think ACO is usually something that happens when you have budget to spend into your online and yeah. your, like presence. So to start with SEO, I definitely I normally don't do this, but again, I'm if you wanted to give the link in the comments, I'm happy to chat to any of your listeners about yeah. what they can do because each of their situations is going to be unique and I'll be able to give them a live report on their domain while I'm chatting to them and then we can I can be able to give them some options about what they oh can beautiful do that's forward. that's very um generous gift we'll make sure that we put that in the comments of both yeah, on YouTube right. and, and in me. here yeah, yeah no problem yeah but again cool. again in terms of getting sorted with SEO as well like you have to have a minimum of eight to nine hundred words on on your kind con like when you're writing content blog up to date you need to have a really good function web website stay away from the yeah. square space very hard to optimize so yeah. WordPress website all the way that yeah the first, wordpress um, yeah well there, there's there that that is a tip because that's the something i get asked a lot is when i do week weeks or blah blah and i've got wordpress wordpress press but and if you yeah. get somebody to build it for you make sure you have access to it too um so yeah, yeah. complete access and, and, and so, it's all analytics on the website in the back end so just get yes. the developer so you can actually start monitoring the traffic yeah those would be the biggest thing is to get started when you're like not knowing what where to go or what to do do not build a squarespace website or wix website yeah. because they look sexy doesn't mean they're going to work properly yeah yeah Sorry, awesome. an engine. that's cool so <laughs> and tell me um just getting back slightly um and then one more question after this um no i haven't got two more questions after <laughs> so on um the importance of as you know i do a lot of video but from what you're seeing, not just SEO, from what yep. you're seeing in the digital space, mm. because I've put out some stats and, and I'm kind of asking to get it, I guess, from the horse's mouth, that what, where do you see video going in the next 12 months? Honestly, if, you, if you've seen the updates on Instagram, like Instagram is preferring um, video mm. content um, yep. over like text and images you know it's, not, it's yeah. no longer just a pretty picture platform and um, so definitely video i think people can feel you more like i think it's very mm -hmm. easy and i know i did it I, I went through some a lot of personal stuff this year and i know that i was posting and people were responding but i, I didn't even feel that authentic just because i had stuff that was really yeah. going on behind the scenes but again if you show up on video and you have the I wasn't, I was going to say Lee Rodi, but I won't. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> but if you have the, 
belief in yourself and you know you're frightened of going live on Facebook like I think just do it like as in mm. video it gives you people a snapshot into knowing who you are and get to know you um, and build a relationship with you and it's like oh my god she likes that I like that too you know and yeah. you have you know these you know, the connections that you make of people that you can actually relate to because yeah. I think that's oh, she, she's just like me or whatever she's just yeah. like me yeah, yeah. And people will buy yeah. from people they know like and trust so I think when it comes to video people can really get a, a good sense of what you're all about but not many people yeah. go on video because they're afraid of what they sound like what they look like what people are going to think they're being naked and yeah. honestly I've been and people people don't care after five minutes and it was the, the head of um, Instagram he actually said people want to be entertained yeah that's the biggest thing and in this present time we find ourselves in and I know I'm a devil for doing it too I'll watch two and three minute videos and yeah. and that's the thing like whether it's a Facebook live and some people hate Facebook lives well that's okay you can still make a really relevant marketing video that is um relevant to your audience and can still engage them because you put a bit of yeah. humor in it. i have one of the videos and the guy is counting money and he reaches over to his little dog and his dog licks his finger while he's still counting the money it's yeah. just a bit of fun and a bit of whatever but to grab 100%. some attention you've hit, you've hit the nail on the head i think like we're i'm so exhausted like uh, from people trying to sell me stuff People reach out to me on LinkedIn about all the proposals that they have for me or yes. how we can work together. Or people are hounded on Facebook. Buy my thing. Buy my thing. Yeah. Instagram. This is what I have for sale. This is our promote. Nobody cares. What can you do for them? You know, and yeah. it's about like putting yourself in the shoes of your target customer. And how can you make their life easier? Yeah. So it's not about yeah. you. And no. Awesome. And I mean, I put one of, one of the things I put on YouTube, like, you know, if you look on YouTube, it has a lovely little picture on it and it's a better marketing campaign. Mm -hmm. But if you actually click on the video, it's it's a Facebook live where I'm turning the camera around and physically showing them my whiteboard and how I did it, and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And it um, got so many, <laughs> uh, so much feedback on it. But it is actually a Facebook live, but it's content. It's what is content relevant to exactly what they want. Yeah. And it's, oh, real. it's and awesome. who you are and you're relatable. And I think when people do videos, it's what happens is the, the masses put you on this pedestal. Yes. Like, oh, there's someone special. I could never do that. I'm just a normal person. You're just a yeah. normal person. Yeah. Like, stop making it about you. Get over yourself. It's about the people you can help. Yeah. That's that's so key. So um, if anyone wanted to contact you, other than we're going to put the link in for an appointment, if they wanted to contact you, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook or wherever, how is the best way for them to do that, Sonia? Um, I probably like a lot of people follow me on Sonia, the search queen. Um, yeah. My agency is the marketing republic. We're currently rebuilding the site at the moment. Um, but if they wanted a search um, to contact me, I can give you the link to my calendar and they can book directly in for a one on one 30 minute yeah. Zoom chat if yeah. that would work. Do you want me to give that to you now? Uh, well, no, you can put it, it in when we're comments. finished. You can pop it yeah. in the comments and I'll make sure that it goes to all the other comments. But Sonia, and, search me on my Instagram or the Marketing Public is my agency. But again, we're revamping all of that at the moment. But Sonia, yeah. the search queen on Instagram or Sonia Patotsky Raymond on Facebook. Yeah. Awesome. So, now, one last question. And I always like to ask my guests this. Um, if you weren't doing what you're doing right now, what would you be doing instead? I think I would be. Um, so I'm an amateur DJ. I play the decks. <laughs> oh, so I love, 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 love dance music. Like I've, I've been a huge fan for years. Is it kind um, of duff, duff, duff? What I would call uh, duff, duff, I my age group. A bit of a chorus, like you know the nineties dance tunes, like Robert. Yeah. You got to show me love. All those yeah. old songs. Love all that. Um, but again. Like I really like lot music just lights me up. So I feel like I do take DJ lessons. I know how to play the decks. I've played at a few parties, but I think I would definitely pursue that a bit more if right. we weren't in a pandemic and I would probably be headlining a beat that. So that's what I would love. Um, that's my passion though. Like I literally love dancing and I was used to be um, an all island hip hop and freestyle champion back in the day. So it's, it's in my blood. Um, yeah, it's what I love to do, but that or write writing books, really. Like I think yeah. that's my next endeavor. I want to write a book. Um, yeah. And did like, you say I, you you used to do hip hop dancing, a freestyle? Yeah. Wasn't it? 
I, I uh, got MTV in 2003. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. I used to do um, ballroom and disco. I oh, actually really? won a disco dancing competition. Oh, uh, that would be an yes. event. Just have a dance yeah. party. To, to rah, rah, Rasputin of oh, oh my God, never mind. A whole other story. I'll take so, yeah. to bring the crowd. Oh, <laughs> radio, radio. Thank you so, so much for joining pleasure. me today. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you here. And um, I'll make sure that this goes up on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe so that we can see some more. And um, any questions that come in afterwards on social media, we'll make sure that we answer them that way. Thank so for now, me. it's my pleasure. It's bye for me. Bye, Auntie Caramel. <laughs>